We're gonna get to my regular app recommendations in just a second, but I wanna start this video out by showing how you can, without any coding knowledge, create your own personal app in like three minutes or less. Before we get there though, I gotta let you know today's video is brought to you by brain.fm. More on that later. I'm gonna fire up this app called Claude here. If you've been following anything in the AI space, you know what Claude is. Claude is an LLM, kind of like ChatGPT, that a lot of people are using to do some coding. And just with natural language, I described a productivity app that I wanted to create out of thin air to take care of those things throughout the day that would take me two minutes or less. So I just described that app. I said when I tap on an item, it should start a two minute timer. And when I complete it, it should move on and start a timer for the next item on the list until I've gone through the whole list and then it should display a congratulations message. And then Claude got to coding. It created that on the fly. And in a matter of seconds, out popped a bespoke app that doesn't exist for anybody else, just for me. And I gotta tell you, I don't do any coding. I'm not a coder, but I caused this app to come into existence. And I'm super excited about it. Make me a game that is a combination of snake and flappy bird, but the theme is a bald eagle and American patriotism. Then Claude spit out some code, right? It kind of assessed what I was asking for. Now the first version of this game, it was called it Patriotic Eagle Game, and it didn't work because I didn't have tap controls, right? So it did build an app, but it says use arrow keys to move. Well, clearly I'm not on a Mac, so that wasn't gonna work. So I came back in, and I gave it some further instructions. I said, I don't have arrow keys. Make it iPhone touch friendly with better graphics. Not too hard, but enjoyable for several minutes. Look at that eagle flapping around. Still a little bit weird. I'm not sure it looks exactly like an eagle, but keep in mind, I didn't do a single line of programming here. I just spoke this into existence and Claude made it happen. And here I am actually playing with this. So I know if you haven't been following all this AI development, you're probably like, whoa, I feel like really empowered. There's a lot that I can do here. Well, if you wanna take things to the next level, then you should check out something called Cursor. This is cursor.com. I'm gonna link all these up down below, by the way. But this is an AI code editor. So a lot of people are switching over from Microsoft's code editor. Now caveat, I'm not a coder. Even though I can make code appear using AI, that doesn't mean I'm a coder any more than using AI to make text and words appear makes me a writer. But this is a really fun space to play around in. I'm gonna link up a guy called Riley Brown for you down in the description, along with all the other links. And he's gone through and learned uh, Claude, he's learned Cursor, and he's figured out, even though he's not a traditional programmer, how to create full-fledged apps using AI. Speaking of interesting, Brain.fm is like a focus mode for your mind. It's science-based focus music, and you can see when you launch, you got a few different categories here. Focus, relax, sleep. I usually just use focus and sleep, and when you get in, there's some subcategories. You can listen to music for deep work, or motivation, or creativity. I like to listen to some of the relaxation music, actually, like the chill playlist, whenever I'm getting some work done. And as you can see, when you play the music, you get this nice timer, so you know, it's kind of like a built-in focus mode, how long you've been at it. And the thing that I extra love about this app is that it works. I know you've probably had this, but there are times when you just have trouble concentrating. Sometimes my default is to throw in some AirPods Pro, kind of use the ANC to drown out everything going on around me. Sometimes I listen to classical music while I'm typing up a script or doing some writing. But depending on what's going on in the environment around me, that's not always enough. And other times when you just want to activate that flow state, I've just found that there's nothing better than launching brain.fm and jumping into these playlists. And actually you can see in the library here, I've saved several favorites over the years. Uh, and I return to these sometimes because I just love them. They sound good anyways, it's really good. So some of my favorites are Full Sails, that's an electronic track, Travels, that's piano, The Crucible, that's classical. And what's really cool is you can go ahead and download your favorites for offline listening. So like I said, Brain.fm is science-backed, and it's great if you have ADHD. There's a turbo mode for extra stimulation. One thing I like about it is how quickly it works. You're gonna feel the effects here, notice it in about five minutes or so, sometimes sooner for me. And I'm sort of gushing here, I realize I'm not really following a script or anything, I'm just telling you about my own experience with this app that I've covered many times in the past because I just organically like it. But it's not just a music playlist like you would fire up in Apple Music, let's say. This is science that you can hear. If you're into productivity or you wanna be more productive, I mean, if you use Apple's focus modes, like I said, this is like a focus mode for your brain, use it in conjunction with your other tools. And trust me, give it a try and report back down in the comments. Look at the reviews, right? They're glowing because this thing works. And I should mention it's cross-platform, works on your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, you know, it's just a web app, 
like wherever you need to access it, it's gonna be there for you. The next app I wanna share with you is one for the Vision Pro. This is the first time I've covered a Vision Pro app in this series, it's called Ceno, and it's really, really clever. What it does is it lets you experience your memories in the virtual environment that you took them. So let's say that you took a photo at the Eiffel Tower. Well, you can see that photo placed next to the Eiffel Tower using maps technology. I mean, when you look at your photos and you're going back through your albums, that's one thing, right? It does connect you to those moments, but there's something else about being surrounded by the scenery where that moment actually happened that kind of sucks you in a little bit deeper. The next app I wanna tip you off to is called Time Wave. These are timer chains. This is for you productivity people out there. I know you can't get enough of these really interesting productivity apps. And kind of like Jess Timer, this isn't just another timer app, it's flowing timers for sequential tasks with a really minimal design. The idea of sequencing timers is pretty cool. If you're gonna do a workout, that can start a timer and start a sequence. That can blend into a cooking timer. That's the next in the sequence, then maybe a Pomodoro timer, et cetera. You create this chain or sequence of your timers. If you're a fan of minimalism, you're gonna feel right at home inside of this. And I like that you get the advanced analytics there. Some people live and die by timers. And if you do, you gotta check this out. Now for you Mac users out there, I got a really cool app for you. It's called Dynamic Dock. You're looking at a video of it right now. What it does is it kind of gives you a different sort of a dock that you access with a little icon in your Mac's menu bar, right? So tap on it and up pops something like this, lets you access your favorite things. So maybe you just want a quick shortcut to all your favorite albums or playlists in Apple Music, then you can create that dock here. Or maybe you want to keep some specific apps handy or even websites within your favorite browser handy. You can do that. And actually you can automate that a little bit. You can do frequently used and just kind of have that auto populate for you. There's some keyboard customizations that you can mess with as well. So if you want to be able to bring this up without having to go up to the menu bar, then come up with a shortcut or hot button of your choice. And I should mention, if you haven't already seen the new wallpaper pack, it's called natural views and oh wow. Are these some amazing views? Not quite photos, not quite illustrations, kind of in between perfect for Apple displays, whether it's your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac. Another really cool app I stumbled upon recently is called Scratchpad. This is another Quick Notes app. Now, of course, Apple's products come with a Quick Notes feature, but Apple's Quick Notes aren't for everybody because I know a lot of people get confused, like what's gonna pop up? Is it gonna be their last note or a fresh note? and they kind of get paralyzed and they don't use it. Here you know what to expect. You can just capture your thoughts instantly in this always accessible note. There's some very, very basic settings here, and that's what I kind of like. This is not an overwhelming thing, super simple to the core, and it's not just for your Mac. You can access it on your iOS device as well. This sort of app is an important category of apps because I'm all about capturing different ideas that I have, and in order to be able to do that, there has to be a cost to benefit analysis that people go through sort of without even thinking of it. And there has to be so little friction that you're going to take the time, even though you're busy doing other stuff to get that idea out and actually save it. And there's very little friction with this app. In fact, I'm so passionate about helping people capture those ideas and not letting them escape that I wanna feature another app called Funnel Quick Capture, which helps you qu capture your thoughts as well. Now this one's a little bit more full featured, a little bit different aesthetics here, not quite so minimal, still simple though, but the execution and the implementation is quite a bit different actually, even though they sound very similar. So the idea here with Funnel is that you capture your ideas and stash them into a specific app. So it's a way to route your ideas with a specific destination in mind. In other words, one tap transfer to your favorite apps. Maybe that means sending images to Obsidian, that can be useful and you need something that's quick and easy to do that with. Maybe you're just looking for a quick way to capture tasks and then drop those off in something like things. This is the kind of app that wouldn't be cool if it didn't have a few things, widgets and iOS shortcuts. And it's got both of those. At the end of the day, is it very similar to something like drafts where you can append or prepend, you know, some text to whatever it is that you're capturing before you stash it? Yeah. This is a drafts alternative. And I wanna end on sort of a business note. I know I got a lot of business people out there or students or different sorts of professionals who just need to share graphs of things, but they don't like to make graphs. Who likes to make graphs? That's why I wanna share with you Graphy, which lets you create pro level graphs that honestly look really amazing. There's this really cool interface that just lets you put in your data super simply and then make it look amazing. So if you were just using Excel before and getting you know this sort of pie chart look on the left, 
with graphy, then you can really make stuff that pops and not just pops, but really illustrates whatever point it is that you're trying to drive home. Obviously, it works really well for embedding data on a website, but you can put this in a pitch deck or any kind of presentation that you're making. And what's impressive to me is just the tools. I'm putting this at the end, even though it's one of my favorite things I'm featuring here. It's about being able to extract and pull out useful insights, which all of that would be cool in and of itself, if this is just a web app that let you do that, but the whole thing is that it's made to share the graphs. You can share these all over the place. Embed in Notion, share with Canva, Gamma, Tome, ClickUp, Slack, email them, put it in your keynote presentation. Really cool stuff, check all this stuff out. It's linked up down below. Don't forget to check out Brain.fm. Support our series sponsor. They're making this series happen and possible. So at least go check it out if you've never been there before. Go do yourself a favor and pre-order Pro iPhone Video Essentials, which helps you shoot a pro video with the iPhone that you already have. You don't have to have the latest and greatest to make something that really pops and looks great. Now with the pre-order, you get a deal. You get Learning to Be Productive, my hit productivity course, and my Freeform Unleashed course for free instantly with your pre-order. Don't forget to check out the wallpaper store. There's some freebies there if you haven't grabbed those already. And the new wallpaper, oh wow. It is so cool. You won't believe how awesome these wallpapers look. It's called Natural Views. They're my favorite, I think, that I've ever produced. 